Good morning, Year 6. Uh, this is a lesson that, uh, sadly, I can't be there to take with you today, but I thought it'd be a great idea to recap what we were working on yesterday in terms of mental addition and subtraction. All right, so you had a little bit of practice last night. Use this short video to remind you so that you should be able to continue working today through the lesson. Get the booklet that you had yesterday afternoon and carry on working through it. I was really pleased with lots of you yesterday in how you were working. Uh, some of you perhaps could do a little bit more work. Fingers crossed you'll be able to do that for me today. So, watch this short video. You can stop it, rewind, have a look. Hopefully it will remind you what we were doing, and then uh, you can get down to work. So, if you remember from yesterday, we were talking about that there are three different ways, mentally, of doing maths, right? And the first one we dealt with was something called the split strategy, all right? Wow, my handwriting is bad on this thing today, but we'll do what we can. And we got the general idea that what we could do was split up the number 347 plus 178 into various different small parts. So using our number here, 347, we found that the number 178 can be split up into 100 plus 70 plus 8. If you remember, this is expanded notation. We've done lots of this. Splitting this 178 up into the numbers 100 plus 70 plus 8 now should make our addition a little bit easier for us. So let's see, we have 347. If you remember, I said, let's add on the 100 first, do our line, and that gives us 447. Now I'm doing it on uh, the whiteboard here or the chalkboard here, but we should be able to do this in our head, hence the idea of a mental strategy. So that's the number 100 dealt with. Let's now move on to the number 70. Taking that and adding on our 70, what do we notice? Well, we should get 517. That's the 70 dealt with. And we leave the eight, same thing, add on the eight. And what do we get? 525. And so using our split strategy, what we would really do in our heads, just to sort of remind you, would be to do the 347, we'd add on the 100 in our head, we'd add on the 70, we'd add on the 8, and that would give us our answer that we saw down here. Not bad if I do say so myself. Let's do another example now where we do a takeaway. All right? It works in exactly the same way, and we're still dealing with the split strategy. So let's look at an example from the actual book that you're working on, 421, take away the number 153. Same thing, let's think of the number 153 as 100 plus 50 plus 3. Right? Now this is the pluses, but remember what we're actually doing is we're going to take them away. So we start with our initial number, 421, 421. This time we're going to look at the 100 and we're going to take it away. So 421 take away 100 is 321. So that's the 100 done. Now let's look at the 50. Let's take away 50 from our answer. 321 take away 50 gives me 271. And now we'll do the 3. And we'll take away the 3 to give me 268. So again, like we were doing earlier with the addition, what we're doing is we're doing 421, our start number, we're taking away 100, then we're taking away 50, then we're taking away 3, and lo and behold, we get our answer of 268. You should be trying to do this in the head. This is a strategy, and I know you've been taught them before, but it's an idea that we start getting faster at for year 7. So that was split strategy. What was the next one? Let's have a look. The next one we dealt with was called the compensation strategy. Now this confused people a little bit in the book because of the way it was set up. Let's try and break it down so that we can make it slightly easier for you. So let's look at the example in the board again or in the book. 235 plus 68. Now the way they did it in the book sort of makes sense, but what they're saying is right, okay, well, 68 is very close to the number 70. So if I think of the sum now as 235 plus 70, I'll get close to my answer. But 
what did we do to get from 68 to 70? Well, we added on two. So I'm gonna write a little add to there. And well, if I now want to balance this out, what I really need to do is I need to undo the plus two to do a minus two here. And that's the number that in the book they're putting in that circle. Now what they're trying to say is it's now easier to do 235 add 70. Because if I do 235 add 70, 235 plus 70 gives me 5, 305. So I can now say that this bit here is 305, but I've got to make sure I take away the 2 to keep the sum balanced, which gives me 303. So again, what we're really doing is we're doing 235, we're adding on 70, but we're taking away 2 to make sure that these numbers here stay at 68. Wow, that's pretty awesome. Another example? I'll do one more. I'll do one of the questions from the sheet to give you a bit of a help. So we have 234 plus 18. Well, let's think. What number is 18 closest to? Well, I think we can make that to 20, to plus 20. That now becomes 234 plus 20. But hold on a moment, we have to be very careful because what we did to get from 18 to 20 was we added on two. So to keep the sum balanced or to compensate, which is where they get the word from it, I must take away the two here, which is what they're putting in the circle. We can work out 234 plus 20 is 254, but I must remember to take away the two, which gives me 252. So my answer is 252. All right. What they're really doing, if you look back at the question, they've got an equal sign here and a box. They're just asking for you to now write 252 in that box for you. All of this here is what we call working out. And in maths, it's really, really important to do the working out. Okay, now that was an ad. Let's just do a takeaway just to check. So 725 minus 39. Hmm, well, 39 is actually closer to the number 40. So let's do 725 minus 40. Well, this is where we now have to start thinking about minus numbers. And I'm pretty sure you guys have done minus numbers or negative numbers. But if we think about this, what have I done to get from 39 to 40? Now, you're going to say, well, actually, what I've done is I've added 1. No, you haven't, because look, we're taking away 39 and then we're taking away 40. So what we're doing is we're actually taking away an extra one. So to compensate in my answer, what I have to do is I have to add one to make up for that compensation. Well, we can do again nice and easily, hopefully in our head, 725 minus 40, which gives me 685. And I remember to add the one, which gives me 686. So just be very, very careful here. Remember, maths is a BFT, which hopefully you all remember, is a big fat trick. So we're not taking away 40 really, we're taking away an extra one, and we have to make sure that we add one here. There is of course one more strategy we talked about, and that's gonna happen on the next screen. And we did the bump strategy, the bump strategy. Now I know lots of you are like, oh, we did this for hours in year five and we don't want to do it anymore. Tough, deal with it. All right, now, I think the bump strategy is very similar to the strategy you were dealing with earlier. Um, so let's just have a look. What they're saying is, right, if I have the numbers 69 and 35 and we're gonna add them together, what they want to do is say, well, we want to round one of those numbers to the nearest 10. And by doing that, we bump numbers up and then we bump numbers down. So 69 plus 35, well, 69 is closer to 70. What have we done to go from 69 to 70? We've added one. So the bump strategy says, well, if I add one onto that one, then I have to take one away from that again to keep it balanced. So that becomes 34. So now our numbers go 70 plus 34, which makes it a lot easier to do in our head. 
the numbers are 104. Ooh, one more. I think I want a bit of a roll. Well, let's just do one more. How about 88 plus 26? Well, what number is 88 closest to? Yes, it's closest to 90. What have I done? Well, I've added two on here, so I now need to take two off of here to keep it balanced. So that becomes 90 plus 24, which gives me 114. Wow! There you go. So those are the three strategies that we were dealing with. If you haven't finished those in the book, then I think you need to. Um, and good luck. And just for information, year six, the rest of the booklet deals with now using those strategies. So there are going to be questions in there that you're going to need to add and subtract and, and really test your knowledge with word questions. And word questions tend to confuse people because there's lots of information there. So reading one of the questions at the moment said, Steph and Maddie's parents give them $10 pocket money each week. It doesn't actually matter that they're called Steph and Marley. That's just trying to throw you. It's trying to trick you. Because remember, maths is a big fat trick. All right. So you're looking for the fact that in that one question, they have $10 pocket money. That's the important piece of information. So when you're doing the questions, and good luck, look for what's important. All right. This is the end of the video. You now have work to do. Remember, if you need to, you can go back and watch this video again and just keep trying to remember how to do it. Good luck, and I'll see you next lesson.